Hello students. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the correction which is done for ballistic ergonometer basic equation when there is damping. Okay. So, we are going to understand the correction for the damping in ballistic ergonometer. You know that when we derived the basic equation for the ballistic ergonometer in the last video, we considered that the whole kinetic energy of the moving coil or the moving system in the BG is used in twisting the suspension wire to an angle theta. Hope you remember that we wrote there half I omega square that is the total energy of the moving coil is was equated with the total work done in twisting the wire through an angle theta that is half C theta square. So such an equation was made. So this was made only because of the assumption that the total kinetic energy is utilized to twist the uh, uh, to twist the wire to an angle theta. Okay. But then in actual practice, you know that this um, coil is deflecting in an environment where there is air, right? So in actual practice, the motion of the coil will be damped by this air resistance. That is, the coil motion will be damped by this air resistance. Okay. And so it will be damped by the air resistance. And 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 in addition to that, there will be some induced current also produced in the coil. So there will be an induced current also produced in the coil. So this will basically damp the motion of the coil. So that means the total energy of the system will not be completely utilized to or cannot be um, completely utilized to actually twist the wire or twist the coil. So that means there is some kind of a damping taking place. So that means, suppose if I am uh, passing a current through the coil and uh, the coil, uh, it would have the total kinetic energy of the system uh, could have actually um, moved the coil through an angle say theta 1. So that means it could have moved to this one. All right, uh, just uh, from the middle portion, it could have deflected through an angle say theta, but actually, but then, uh, sorry, uh, actually it, would, it could have um, moved through an angle theta, but it, because of the damping, because of all these damping existing in the coil, what happens is it may not get moved till theta, it may only move till say theta 1. Okay, so then what happens and uh, this much uh, x displacement has moved or theta 1 angle and then it will again you know that it is vibration or it is oscillation taking place, right? So, charge will be flowing through a moment of uh, time for a small time amount of time. So, theta 1 will be the first deflection towards the right, say. Then after that, the coil will deflect towards the left and obviously, let this be the main position. Okay. So, that angle let it be theta 2. Now, what happens is on each oscillation, basically the uh, amplitude will go on decreasing. So now it will get deflected only till say theta 3, then it will again uh, uh, rotate towards the left. So then it may be theta 4, and then after that it will again reduce its uh, amplitude, becomes theta 4, and then again it reduces its amplitude, say theta 5. It continues, right? So till it becomes um, uh, like uh, till the whole damping reduces its complete um, energy and then. Basically, it will come to the main position. It will not deflect anymore. So this is what is happening basically in the uh, moving coil. Uh, sorry, in the ballistic galvanometer. Moving coil ballistic galvanometer. So because of the effect of the damping, the complete the system will not make the complete rotation as is it is like, as it is expected. As the theoretically suppose if the first throw which is uh, happening on the ballistic galvanometer, the moving coil BD, that the first throw, uh, without the damping, 
it could have been theta, but actually because of the damping effect, the first throw is selected to be theta 1. And then the second throw, the first throw towards the left be theta 2, second throw towards the right is theta 3, second throw towards the left is uh, theta, this is theta 4 basically, theta 4, it goes on like this. Okay. So suppose so now so now you understood that theta one uh, that is theta three then theta five they are successive uh, deflections uh, from the zero position successive successive deflections from zero positions towards zero position towards the right towards say right. Similarly, I can say theta 2, then theta 4, then theta 6, this is theta 6, are the successive deflections from the zero position, position towards the left. Okay. So then, it is found that the ratio between these successive deflections, that is theta 1 by theta 2, or successive deflections means it is theta 1 by theta 2 or it can be theta 2 by theta 3 that is theta 2 by theta 3 then the other successive deflections theta 3 by theta 4 that is theta 3 by theta 4 this ratio is found to be equal to um, some value say d so that means theta 1 will get reduced or theta 2 will get reduced by a factor d with respect to theta 1. I can understand like that, right? And this constant, so this is constant, this successive ratio, you know that theta, uh, from theta 2, the deflection will be lesser. And if, when we come to theta 3, right? From theta 3 to theta 4, it will get reduced. But that reduction is a constant factor, and this constant is called, the constant d is called the decrement per half vibration. You know that this is half vibration. Decrement for half vibration. Half vibration means uh, from theta 1 to theta 2 basically uh, half of the vibration, vibration has taken place. From theta, if suppose if theta 1 to theta 2 half of the vibration then when it reaches theta 3 the full vibration takes place. Right? That is uh, from here back to here. That is the full vibration. So from here to here, that is half vibration. So you can call this as the decrement for half vibration. Okay. And this constant, let's just, you know that it uh, decreases. It is a decrement. And this constant is considered, this decrement is considered as equal to, we assume that as equal to some quantity e raised to lambda. That means it exponentially decreases according to this constant say lambda and then I can say that from this if you take log on both sides you will get log uh, to the base e d and this is lambda log to the base e so that means lambda itself right so you get lambda as like this then this lambda is called as the logarithmic decrement okay so in this case this lambda is called as the logarithmic decrement D was the decrement, the simply decrement for half vibration and uh, we call this lambda as the logarithmic decrement in this case. Now if it is like theta 1 by theta 2, now from this equation itself, I can write uh, theta 1 by theta 3. How can I write theta 1 by theta 3 as? I can write it as theta 1 by theta 2 multiplied by theta 2 by theta 3. Right. Theta 1 by theta 3 can be written as theta 1 by theta 2 into theta 2 by theta 3. Right? So, this is what theta 1 by theta 2 is d. Right? Similarly, theta 2 by theta 3 is also d. Right? Into d. So, I can write it as d square. Okay? If it is d square, what is d? d is e raised to lambda. Then what is e? d square e raised to lambda raised to 2. That is e raised to to lambda, right? So now I can call this as the um, 
so this is basically theta 1 to theta 3 is actually a full vibration from theta 1 to theta 3 i can call it as the full vibration or i can call it as the decrement for a full vibration decrement for a full vibration now you consider this theta as the true first true that is we had already said that if there was no damping, actually the first throw would have been theta. Okay, so that theta be the true first throw. Okay, that is in the absence of damping. And you can understand that this theta 1 is actually from mean position to theta 1 is actually what it is actually quarter of the vibration right total from here to here it is half vibration then again uh, from theta 1 to theta 3 it is full vibration from theta 1 alone if you consider that is actually half vibration sorry quarter vibration so now i am going to take the ratio between theta by theta 1 okay theta is the um, theoretical throw first throw and this theta 1 is the actual first throw. And so I can write this as theta by uh, theta 1. So from, we said that for, this is theta 1 is quarter of vibration. So for half vibration it was um, erased to, this uh, decrement was erased to uh, lambda. And for full vibration it was erased to 2 lambda. And obviously for quarter vibration it will be what erased to lambda by 2. For for uh, half vibration, it was erased to lambda. So, for quarter vibration, it will be erased to lambda by 2, right? So, that means, uh, and erased to lambda by 2, I can write as erased to x. I can write as 1 plus x by 2 plus it will continue, right? So, in that sense, I can roughly approximate this value as 1 plus lambda by 2, okay? So, from this I can write theta as equal to theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2. Okay. Now, um, we can calculate this lambda. Our, our attempt is we have to find this uh, lambda. This lambda by can be calculated by observing uh, some first throw. So, I mean, by, when we do the experiment, you can observe the first throw. And then suppose you can observe the uh, through after some time. So, let me say I observe the first throw theta 1, okay, and then I observe the 11th throw. This is the first throw, right? I observe the first throw and then what I say is I will uh, see the other throws and then I will make the observation for the 11th throw, say 11th throw. So, for the 11th throw, then let it be theta 11, okay. So, then I am writing it as theta 1 by, I observed first throw theta 1, then I observed the 11th row theta 11, then I, theta 1 by theta 11 can be written as theta 1 by theta 2 into theta 2 by theta 3, it will continue, right? Theta 3 by theta 4, all these get will get cancelled and finally it will come and write, finally I can write theta uh, 10 by theta 11 and this will be here theta 9 by theta 10. So, all these will get cancelled. Okay. All this theta 2, theta 3, theta, theta 4. Similarly, it will get cancelled and theta 10 by theta 10. So, you know that this becomes theta 1 by theta 11. And all these individual theta 1 by theta 2, theta 2 by theta 3, all this is individually equal to raised to lambda. So, individually, I can write raised to lambda, into raised to lambda, into raised to lambda, and this becomes almost, it is equal to e raised to 10 lambda. 10 times, actually, 10 times we are doing this process, I will get e raised to 10 lambda. Okay. So, then, then I can again, uh, similar to the previous case, I can take the, or I can write theta 1 as equal to, um, I take the log on both sides, that is log of theta 1 by theta 11 and log of e raised to 10 lambda. Then I will get, log uh, theta 1 by theta 11 to the base e is equal to 10 lambda. So, if I want to find lambda, lambda is actually equal to 1 by 10 into log of 
to the base e theta 1 divided by theta 11. So this experimentally we can under, uh, calculate lambda, right? Because we, you do the experiment with the ballistic galvanometer passing current for some time and then you can count the theta 1 the first row and theta 11 the 11th row and then using this relation I can find the value for lambda. Okay, so then now it is easy. Now if lambda is computed, we have uh, derived the basic equation for BG in the last session that is Q is equal to T which is the time period divided by 2 pi into C by uh, N B magnetic flux then A is the area of the coil and then theta. Okay, this theta is the actual theta uh, or the theoretical theta we say. Uh, but then we understand that because of the damping we don't, uh, we cannot get the actual theta. But we have found out that uh, this theta is actual theta is equal to theta 1 which is the first observed throw multiplied by 1 plus lambda by 2. Okay, now instead of this theta, I can substitute the actually observed theta 1 or I can substitute this term. So that means I can write instead of theta, t by 2 pi into c divided by n b a into uh, theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2. Okay, that is the charge of the so that means the Q is directly proportional to theta 1, but then uh, this is actually what we do. This is what we observed first throw. And then we have, we always say that Q is directly proportional to the throws, right, theta. And this Q is proportional to this theta 1 here. But now it is easy. Okay, this is the time period and all these things uh, you can um, understand. Uh, this uh, and this 1 plus lambda by 2 and this is called the ballistic galvanometer reduction factor you know that and this 1 plus lambda by 2 and that also you can find out, find out because lambda is basically the um, uh, logarithmic decrement which you can find out um, using 1 by 10 in the log theta 1 by theta 11 so from that you can find lambda and this uh, the equation for the q okay so this is how uh, you actually correct the final equation for the ballistic galvanometer. Equation which we studied earlier was t by 2 pi into c by n b a in the theta, but now theta is replaced using the logarithmic decrement in this way, and then this is the actual case of uh, or actual equation where damping is being considered. It is the pra most practical case, and this equation is the practical case. That is why we call as we have corrected the final equation for the ballistic galvanometer and this is the correction for the ballistic galvanometer and this quantity is called as the ballistic galvanometer reduction factor. Okay, I hope you understood this. Okay, thank you very much.